outward appearances to the contrary, this is a ship leaving home port. There is no pier, and no brass bands mark the occasion. But to these men and their loved ones, the somber reality of goodbye is not diminished. The men are Navy submariners on their way to Holy Lock, Scotland, to begin a three-month cycle of work and isolation quite unlike any other Navy experience. These special sailors and their fleet ballistic missile submarine have a mission that is vital to the nation's aim of deterring enemy attack. Well, as we're on the flight uh, heading to Holy Lock, uh, looking back at uh, leaving our families, it, uh, it is a sad experience. This is my 18th time, and leaving my family gets harder for me, and I think that it gets harder for my family also. I just got off shore duty. We've had two kids while we're on shore duty, and uh, I feel that they, they're going to miss me quite considerably. On the other hand, uh, I'm looking forward to the refit and the patrol. It's a real challenge. Uh, each one is different. No, I don't look forward to refit. Uh, I look forward to patrol. The concept of twin crews allows each ballistic missile submarine to conduct its silent patrols about 70% of the time while each of its crews is deployed only half the time. And by operating from advanced sites like Holy Lock in the Atlantic and Guam in the Pacific, the submarines can be on station with a minimum of transit time. While the blue crew arrives at the Navy site in Holy Lock and moves into temporary quarters, their submarine is returning from patrol manned by their counterparts in the gold crew. As soon as the submarine ties up alongside the tender, blue and gold crews begin an intense three days of turning over the ship and its responsibilities. We have 8,642 man hours for this refit. We do expect more jobs. We have a total of 188 jobs so far. Every system on board is checked out for proper operation, so the oncoming crew knows exactly what work will have to be done to make the ship ready for another patrol. Early on the fourth day of turnover, the crews exchange command in a brief ceremony. Commodore Cattell, I report that I will send command to James Madison. Very well. With another patrol behind them, the off-going crew eagerly heads for home and waiting loved ones. For the oncoming crew, the task of refit now begins. For three weeks, they will work round the clock with the men of the tender to make sure the sub and her equipment are ready for the two months and more of submerged patrol. The shops of the tender can fix or replace nearly any component on board, from periscopes to Poseidon missiles. Of course, more than weapons must be brought aboard. There are the needs of the 135 officers and men for the entire patrol, including provisions for more than 25,000 meals. After a demanding month of preparation, the submarine slips away from the tender and heads to sea. Few of the men know where this patrol will take them, but all are keenly aware that they will be gone for over two months and will remain submerged the entire time. They know, too, that the only reason they go to sea 
is to be ready to launch their missiles should the president ever give the command. The silent, mobile, and elusive fleet ballistic missile submarines are the most survivable element in our nation's strategic forces. Each one packs more destructive power than all the bombs of World War II. Truly a strong deterrent to nuclear conflict. Launch readiness is maintained by going through the procedure so often that to the crew, it becomes as natural as brushing teeth or tying shoes. But the seriousness of their purpose is apparent in every drill. Band battle stations missile for WSRT, spin up all missiles. Missile for WSRT, spin up all missiles. Okay, we're on course 220, head one third, no sonar contacts, no evolutions in progress. You have two R114s and a launch. I relieve the deck in the con. And relieve. Quartermaster, Mr. Winslow, have the deck in the con. Quartermaster, I. Tell Mr. Winslow, have the deck in the con. All stop. Yeah. Supervisor, what's the 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 Launcher con, pressurize all two. Select air. Pressurize two, one and sixteen. Select air. Set pressurization supply switch to air. Set pressurization supply switch to air, LCB one I. Diving officer, shift hovering mode to missile launch. Con nav weapons, navigation fire control, transmission checks completed satisfactorily. Set condition one SQ for WSRT. This is the captain. This is an exercise. Set condition 1SQ for WSRT. This is the executive officer. This is an exercise. Supervisor weapons, perform channel check. Both channels when ready. Channel checking. Missile 1, channel 1. Missile 16, channel 2. All stations weapons. The fire order will be a normal fire order. Fire order will be a normal fire order. Con weapons, weapon system in condition 1SQ for WSRT, WSRT mode verified. Weapon system in condition 1SQ for WSRT. Cabin ship is in condition 1SQ. Officer deck select training fire, weapons, you have permission to fire. You have permission to fire, I right, Captain. Training fire selected. Weapons con, you have permission to fire. Permission to fire, con weapons are. Permission to fire. Denote one. Denote 16. One, away. This drill will end 16. not with the away. roar of missiles, but with the shared hope of 135 men that their unseen presence will be deterrent enough, and the missiles will never have to be fired in retaliation. Today, America's submarine forces number over 130 ships, the vast majority of them nuclear powered. But a ship, no matter how she is crafted, is only as strong as the sailors who take her to sea. Where do the men of the submarine force come from? And how do these volunteers of divergent backgrounds become dedicated and serious professionals? These men are going out and man are... This is graduation day at the Naval Submarine School in Groton, Connecticut. In the basic courses, the full spectrum of submarine systems is taught and safety is emphasized throughout. Each man, for example, learns the technique for underwater escape should his sub ever become disabled. Students must maintain good academic standing and demonstrate adaptability to the submarine environment as well. The routine is tough, and one man in seven will not make it. But it is better to select the most qualified here than to do the weeding out later in the fleet. Training will always be a significant part of a sub-sailor's life. So we have four Those who operate and maintain the vital nuclear propulsion system, for example, receive a full year of demanding classroom and practical engineering training. I'll stop. I'll stop, by. 
Most submariners, regardless of rank or rating, will go to advanced and specialized courses dealing with the complex equipment and tactics they employ. One six seven point five. Stand by to mark minute forty four. Firing point procedures two one. Mark minute forty four. One six seven point two. Very well. Match sonar bearings and shoot. Rudder is right full. Three degree up bubble. Two eight Three zero. Three degree up bubble, aye, sir. I believe your headings. Believe the headings, aye. Flying the engine room. Flying the engine room. Aye. Right. Sound the collision alarm. Emergency blow on main ballast. All ahead, sir. Training never stops. In a realistic environment ashore, crews of operational submarines develop teamwork during in-port or off-patrol periods. Mistakes can be made and corrected here to sharpen performance where it counts most, at sea. About half the graduates will be assigned to attack submarines, the nuclear-powered fast attacks and the few diesel subs that remain in the fleet. The fast attacks are swifter and more maneuverable than the larger ballistic missile subs, and there is considerable variety in the missions they perform. The primary function of the fast attack, whether operating alone or in concert with naval, air, and surface forces, is against its own kind. The destruction of enemy submarines. Modern torpedoes and missiles are also effective in the traditional role against surface targets. They would bear a large measure of the wartime responsibility for keeping our vital sea lanes open while denying their use to an enemy. Teamwork is essential to the success of every attack mission. Chief of Watch, man battle stations. Man battle In battle drills like this one, that teamwork is honed to a fine edge. Mark Speed five and a half. Sonar contact clear to go active. Contact now bears 313. Set running depth 85 feet. Set running depth 85 feet, all right. Firing point procedures 2181. Make tube 1 ready in all respects. Torpedo on firing panel, make weapon tube 1 ready in all respects. This course about 12170. Speed 5050. Sonar contact tube 1. Stand by. Shoot. Shoot. Tube one fired electrically. Six. Zero coming six two. Zero zero and line in the turn. Prepare to surface. Retriever in sight. Radio con inform the retriever uh, that completes the exercise. I think that the challenge aspect of the job is the thing that I like most about the submarine force, whether it be maneuvering as an engine officer watch or as an officer deck. One of the things I liked about being on a fast attack was that you're more often doing a variety of different things, operating with carriers, operating with other submarines, with aircraft, doing independent exercises. Um, these type of things, I think, add to the challenge of the job. One of the things that was most difficult as a married man on an SSN is the uncertainty of your schedule. On the other hand, a uh, fast tech submarine is uh, a lot higher key program. It's, there's a lot more to do. There's a lot more going on, in my opinion, a lot more interesting. And for someone who doesn't mind or would like to work hard and uh, really feel accomplishment for a job, uh, fast tech's the only place to be. There are 
are sharp contrasts between attack and missile submarine operations, but with the exception of strategic systems technicians, officers and men are often assigned from one type to the other. A day in the life of any ship is not quite like any other day or any other ship. But there are many common elements in what a submariner would call his daily routine. Once we get underway and go to sea, it becomes an 18-hour day for us because we have six hours that we spend on watch and then we have the next 12 hours off for qualification work, uh, studying if you bring any courses. We've got a really good boat, a really good crew. Uh, we're close-knit. In terms of morale, I would think that food service, again, like all the jobs, one of the most important. Uh, you have very few things to really look forward to. You don't have uh, the Saturday night date or anything like that, so you have the meals, actually, and you look forward to a meal. You look at the menu and see that you've got your favorite pie coming up on Friday night or you've got pizza night on Thursday night. We have parties. We have a Coke machine. We make pastries and cakes. We do, all, obviously, all our own support, and in that way, the guy can look forward to uh, a good meal and a good time sitting down here talking to his friends. So I wouldn't trade it for anything. I wouldn't trade any of the friends I've made or the job I do. Well, sometimes during patrol, we, we, we receive newsletters from radio. We get messages or from our family. We get family grams. Um, that's for a romantic one. Some of the wives can really dream up some really fantastic family grams. And so it's more or less just a, you know, just a I'm fine, I love you, I miss you type thing that at least we know, we familiarize with the words and the, the names in the family gram to know that is our family, know that they are all right. Your husband's on a, on a boat. He's with people constantly. 
Just as the crew of a submarine feel that they are a kind of family, their wives find companionship and understanding in group experiences such as this submarine wives club. You, know, you, may, you may not feel at one patrol, you may feel at the next, and it may get worse with each patrol. It may get better with each patrol. You know, it's kind of How do these wives feel about their husband's choice of submarine duty? My husband's in the submarine force, and although my second separation, this is my second separation is coming up, I found the first one a lot more satisfying than uh, depressing. I think after a while you get used to it, but it really is hard for a while. Beyond the submarine service itself, I don't believe they really know how many hours these men put in that they're not able to do the things they'd like to do or that their family would like to do because they're too busy being dedicated. I can't say I really enjoyed him being out to sea, but I liked him coming home. It was like we've been married almost 21 years, and even though we've been married all that length of time, it was just like we were newlyweds all over again. I thought it was just great. Clearly, family separations are among the toughest challenges that submariners face. But once at sea, there is scarcely time to dwell on that. Even after all the training they've been through, each member of the crew must qualify as a submariner, a demanding process that takes six to nine months for the men and about 15 months for officers. We have two alarm functions associated with the system. It takes a great deal of studying to learn the complex systems on board. But each member of the crew must know more than just his own responsibilities. More experienced shipmates share their knowledge and finally conduct a rigorous examination in which nothing is taken for granted. Submarine qualification is not quite like anything anywhere else, and it shows in the pride of a submariner when he finally earns his dolphins. Let me say that I know how much these qualification badges mean. You're going to be proud of it in the future. It's going to be a mark of respect for you, especially from those of your shipmates and the other members of the submarine community, not only the submarine community, but also other people in the Navy that have such a high regard for submariners as professionals. Thank you. Congratulations to you. I see in our submarine force a special kind of pride, the pride that real professionals show in their work and in their ships. As warfare technology becomes more complex and demanding, the Navy's need for capable and dedicated people grows too. In the submarine force, just as in the surface and air warfare communities, it's our people who respond today and will still be the key element in the Navy of tomorrow. While Navy submariners work and study to stay abreast of developments in their chosen specialties, new ships are being built which advance the frontiers of submarine warfare almost past the point of imagination. USS Los Angeles, first of a whole new fast attack class, has joined the fleet. Faster and even quieter than her predecessors, this new class was designed to face the growing threat of Soviet submarines already the world's largest underwater fleet. The largest submarine, however, is ours. The new Trident class, nearly the length of two football fields, will carry 24 missiles with a range that vastly increases the ocean areas in which it can patrol. While USS Ohio, first of the Tridents, is being built, Test firings of the new Trident missile are proving the accuracy and dependability of this advanced weapon system. It has been another successful patrol for this crew. Successful because 16 missiles still rest in their tubes. Mute testimony to the deterrent power of their presence. After two months and more of patrol, the men are more than ready to turn their ship over to the oncoming crew and leave Scotland with eager anticipation of the flight home. Naturally, I really, look, I really do look forward to seeing my wife again. And 
that's that's all I intend to do for the next 30 days is become reacquainted. First thing I'm going to do on the way home, on the way home, I told my wife I'm going to stop at Taco Bell. That's what that's one of the things I miss the most. This overall general, mostly the weather and things like that, just the little things everyone takes for granted every day. To me, at the airport's exciting, always is. It's probably one of the happiest times of the year, anyway. What's next is getting there, seeing the family. A little tired, but very elated about getting home. <laughs> that's, uh, that's it in a one nutshell. I'm anxious to get home now and just... Fantastic. Going home and it's wonderful. Probably I'm going to have to shave. <laughs> <laughs> next event, hold my wife and my kid in my arms. That's what I want. The future is bright for the Navy submarine force. There are the tangible rewards of good training, good pay, and good food. But for most submariners, the deeper fulfillment is pride in their particular job, the camaraderie of a close crew, and the knowledge that together they perform as a critical element in the defense of our nation and peace in the entire world.